As we dive deeper this morning into the crisis facing SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, even bigger banks have taken a tumble. The KBW Bank Index down again today after posting its worst day since June 2020. It's off the lows of the day, but still getting hit. In fact, members of the index shedding more than $90 billion in value just yesterday. But right now, some of the banks are seeing signs of life. J.P. Morgan, PNC now, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and Morgan Stanley have all gone into the green. Joining us is Tom Michaud, CEO of KBW, a steeple company. Boy, Tom, what a, what a crazy 48 hours in your world. How do you think about the spillover effect from this debacle? It, it's really remarkable, um, but I think there are a couple of important takeaways. One is, is this contagion or is this really something that's unique? Um, I really believe it's idiosyncratic and that, you know, Silicon Valley had a much larger bond portfolio as a percentage of assets than a typical bank. Um, their area of focus, they've been the leader in, in being the niche bank to the growth sector. Um, that sector is under a lot of pressure, burning a lot of cash. So I think it's very unique to Silicon Valley. Um, I don't think this is going to be a broad-based contagion. Um, I think that so many of the other banks have much broader forms of funding, uh, and they're just much better diversified uh, in terms of their assets and business mix. So I don't think it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be that. Even though the stocks, you know, are all being painted generally with the same brush. So our research department actually came out. And, and recommended a couple of stocks recently in um, in the middle of the sell-off. That's number one. But number two is, Sarah, this is also part of the bigger picture, which is the markets are still and policymakers are still undoing COVID, meaning that we're coming off of zero interest rates. We've just gone through one of the fastest and most significant tightening cycles of my career. It's been a lot of rate move, and it's been in a short period of time. And also, the Fed is shrinking its balance sheet, which is draining the banking system of a lot of the surge deposits that showed up uh, as part of the stimulus and monetary policy to help during COVID. And so that's the environment we're navigating, and it's not going to be linear. You know, it's created challenges and pressures. I think that most of the industry, we expect, is able to handle it, but there are a couple of companies that had uh, too much exposure in a particular uh, concentration of, uh, of their assets. And I think that's so where that, we are. That's what I wanted to dive into with you because the concern is that unlike the big banks, the regional banks aren't as well capitalized. They're, they're certainly not as regulated. And we, and we don't know exactly how well they've been managing this interest rate risk in the face of what has been a rate shock, a very quick move and a very big inversion of the yield curve. Yeah, I, I will tell you, the question isn't is about the type of regulation. The question is, are they regulated enough? I can assure you they are regulated enough. They may be regulated differently, but they're regulated enough. So I would address that point. Um, I think the message of the last couple of weeks in banking is, is you want diversification. Having all your eggs in one basket makes you very prone to changes in that sector or having too much concentration on your balance sheet in the case of the bond market uh, might not be a good position to be in. And so I think that's the message. The other thing is a lot of the regional banks have a lot more retail funding, um, which doesn't tend to move so fast. And also probably as a percentage of deposits, they have more coverage from the FDIC. So I, I wouldn't say that this is just going to spill over. And then also, too, you know, the central bank can stand behind a lot of the banking industry with their support and make sure we don't have a banking crisis. So, uh, and I think that those factors uh, are certainly going to be uh, at play here. Uh, it's interesting, you know, last 24 hours, I've seen arguments that we should blame Dodd-Frank and thank Dodd-Frank uh, for either bringing our attention to this, um, you know, early or creating worries where there were no worries to begin with. And by the way, J.P. Morgan reports on the 14th. So as the earnings uh, cycle begins again, and I wonder how much of this is going to be uh, visible once we start getting those quarters. Um, you know, my, my feeling is that that this is going to be very company specific when we get to the end of this. Um, the banking industry, you know, the regional banks are still very well capitalized. They're not maybe as well capitalized as they were a couple of years ago, but but the banking industry is still pretty well, well capitalized. Um, I think what we're going through is just the fact that FDIC deposits are shrinking as the Fed is shrinking its balance sheet. And that's what's unusual. 
Um, we downgraded the banking sector in December because we felt that there was going to be a lot of revenue growth headwind. And I think that, you know, we're seeing it maybe a little bit more starkly than even we thought. But, but I still think it's a question of earnings growth, not a question of solvency with, with the banking industry, uh, even though the stocks today are suggesting otherwise, which is why our research department actually came out and kind of rallied around a couple of our core recommendations. So, so, so are you saying that they're not in this same sort of problematic stake where they're funding their long-term treasury holdings with deposits that are, that are now bailing? Well, look, the whole banking business is about duration. What I can tell you is Silicon Valley's bond portfolio is a percentage of their assets and is a percentage of their equity was extraordinary, okay? Extraordinary. Did not look like a typical bank's. A typical bank has a lot more uh, diversification to their balance sheet, um, and that gives them multiple sources to provide liquidity. And so, so I view this, if, I, if we were to look at a peer group analysis, you would see that Silicon Valley in that regard was an outlier. So the, the rest of the industry, I think, is on more solid footing to handle this liquidity moment. Doesn't mean there won't be pressures. Does it? There's a tremendous competition for deposits right now because of higher rates and because the Fed's been draining liquidity out of the system. That's a competitive situation, in my opinion, not a solvency uh, situation, in, in my opinion. All right. In, in defense of the regional banks, Tommy Show, it's great. You make your luck. We've, we've had such good guests on this topic today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Carl.